Let's get right into it. Number 7. The Death Star Moon Imagine looking up at the night sky and seeing the actual Death Star from Star Wars staring back at you. That's essentially what happened when NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft snapped a photo of Mimas, one of Saturn's 62-plus moons. Mimas is a small, unremarkable ball of ice, but what makes it instantly iconic, and honestly a bit unsettling, is the colossal, planet-killing-sized Herschel crater dominating one side. This impact crater is nearly 86 miles across, almost a third of the moon's entire diameter. To put that in perspective, if a crater of proportional size hit Earth, it would be almost 2,500 miles wide say goodbye to continents, not just Alderaan. The impact that caused it should have shattered Mimas entirely. It was a cosmic punch strong enough to reduce the moon to a million pieces of space gravel. Yet somehow, Mimas just took the hit, shook off a little dust, and now just looks perpetually menacing. Why did it survive? Well, the running theory is that this tiny, terrifying moon is just a fluffy little space snowball with a surprisingly thick, non-uniform layer of ice that absorbed the shock. It's the universe's equivalent of a marshmallow that took a bullet soft enough to deform, not hard enough to fragment. But don't let the fluffy part fool you. This moon is silently floating through space with a giant, terrifying eye. A perpetual reminder that it took the biggest hit in the galaxy and is still here. You're welcome for the nightmares. Number 6. Diamond Rain If you're looking for an exotic vacation spot, might I suggest the giant ice planets of our outer solar system, Neptune and Uranus? Forget the beaches. Here, you can experience a meteorological phenomenon that puts a dreary drizzle to shame. Diamond Rain. Yes, you heard that right. Deep within the crushing, high-pressure atmospheres of these ice giants, the insane temperatures and pressure we're talking hundreds of thousands of times. Earth's atmospheric pressure and thousands of degrees literally take the methane gas, rip it apart, and compress the remaining carbon into solid diamonds. These diamond nuggets, possibly as big as a car battery, then rain down through the atmosphere until they hit the solid mantle, where they probably form an ocean of liquid carbon or some other ungodly soup. So, while you're worrying about a little hail on Earth, those distant worlds are being pummeled by a literal shower of gemstones. The universe is casually generating wealth on a scale that makes the world's diamond cartels weep, and it's doing it with gas that, on Earth, we usually just burn or complain about. Basically, Neptune is the ultimate flex for the solar system. Number 5. The Ghost of Planet 9 This is the one that really keeps astronomers awake at night. The creepiest thing not found deep in our solar system is the theoretical Planet 9. This is a hypothetical planet, maybe five to ten times the mass of Earth, that is thought to be lurking somewhere in the deep, dark, outer reaches of the Kuiper Belt or beyond. Why do we think it's there? Because of the clustered orbits of a small number of extremely distant, small solar system bodies. These tiny objects all have orbits that are strangely tilted and clustered together, which is incredibly unlikely unless a massive, unseen gravitational influence is corralling them. Basically, these distant objects are all pointing and screaming. Something huge is out there. The only thing that can explain the weird, synchronized ballet of these tiny, icy rocks is a giant planet's gravitational well, secretly orchestrating their movements from the dark. It's the ultimate cosmic game of hide-and-seek, a whole planet that we can't directly see. Only infer by the bizarre, puppet-like movements of the tiny ice cubes it commands. It's an astronomical specter, a gravitational ghost that we know is real, but can't quite catch. Number 4. Pluto's Beating Heart You'd think a tiny, icy rock four billion miles away, officially stripped of its planetary status, would be a dead, frozen wasteland. You'd be wrong. Pluto, that cosmic underdog, is apparently geologically active. When the New Horizons probe flew by, it saw a region shaped suspiciously like a giant heart the informally named Sputnik Planitia, which is a massive plane of solid nitrogen, carbon monoxide, and methane ices. The crazy part? This ice sheet is constantly convecting. It's churning, flowing, and turning over like a giant pot of frozen stew, or more accurately, like a lava lamp made of nitrogen ice. This is driven by trace amounts of heat coming from Pluto's rocky core, which is enough to keep the nitrogen ice soft and flowing, constantly erasing impact craters and completely resurfacing that entire region every few hundred thousand years. And get this, 
Pluto's mountains, which are made of ridiculously hard water ice, are literally floating on this soft, flowing nitrogen like colossal icebergs. Yes, Pluto has floating water ice mountains. The science basically says this dwarf planet has a heart that's still beating, churning, and refusing to freeze solid, making it more dynamic than many of its much larger, closer to the sun neighbors. It's the solar system's most dramatic demonstration of spite. Number 3. The Planet Killer Cloud Now, for something that redefines deep in our solar system, let's talk about the Oort Cloud. You've probably heard of it, but do you grasp its true, terrifying scale? It's not a cloud like the fluffy white ones you see outside. It's a vast, spherical shell of icy debris that completely envelops our entire solar system, starting roughly 2,000 to 5,000 astronomical units out and extending perhaps halfway to the next star. That's hundreds of times farther out than Pluto. It's essentially the cosmic junkyard of our solar system's formation, a trillion icy bodies just floating in a dark, cold, empty graveyard. The creepy part? Every so often, the gravitational pull from a passing star or a nearby molecular cloud gives this trillion-strong swarm a little gravitational nudge. This nudge sends a few of those icy bodies which we call comets hurtling on long, looping trajectories toward the inner solar system, where they can occasionally spell disaster for planets like ours. It's a vast, dormant, ticking time bomb waiting for a passing ghost star to slightly misalign its gravity and fling a planet-killer ice ball at us. We are, quite literally, surrounded by potential extinction. Number 2. Europa's Subsurface Glow Jupiter's moon Europa is often cited as the second best place in the solar system to look for life after Enceladus, which has that convenient spray of liquid water. Europa is a massive, frozen marble, entirely encased in an incredibly thick layer of water ice. The entire surface is a chaotic mess of fissures, ridges, and weird, jagged patterns that look like someone shattered and then poorly glued a mirror back together. The truly unsettling part is what's underneath an ocean of liquid salt water potentially deeper than all of Earth's oceans combined. What keeps it warm? You guessed it, Jupiter's intense tidal forces are flexing the moon like a stress ball, generating heat. But here's where it gets creepy. Researchers think that the ocean floor might be lit up. Not by light, obviously, but by chemosynthesis life forms creating energy without sunlight, clustered around hydrothermal vents, much like those found in Earth's deep ocean. But even cooler is the idea that the intense radiation from Jupiter smashing into the ice crust could be creating chemical oxidants that sink down, creating a source of energy for life. It's a subsurface habitat where the energy source is radiation from the host planet, giving it a creepy, unnatural glow, fueled by pure atomic chaos. A whole ocean, potentially teeming with bizarre life, completely invisible and perpetually being microwaved by Jupiter. Number 1 the heliopause bubble. The true, definitive end of our solar system isn't Pluto, or the Oort cloud, but the heliopause. This is the final frontier, where the constant stream of charged particles pouring off the sun, the solar wind is finally halted by the pressure of the interstellar medium, the gas and plasma floating between stars. Our solar system is essentially a gigantic, protective magnetic bubble called the heliosphere, created by the sun, shielding us from the much harsher, more dangerous galactic environment. The heliopause is the thin, fragile boundary of that bubble. We know it's there because the Voyager probes actually punched through it, sending back data that showed the solar wind speed suddenly dropped to zero. Beyond this bubble is truly alien space, filled with galactic cosmic rays that could scramble unshielded life in seconds. The creep factor? This boundary isn't fixed. It's constantly being pushed and pulled by the forces outside, occasionally flickering and flexing. We are living inside a giant, cosmic force field, a thin boundary of solar energy that keeps the truly nasty parts of the galaxy out. The moment that shield fails or weakens, we're toast. Basically, your nervous system is throwing a tantrum in your honor.